Hey guys, what's up? I know you don't expect this type of content on this channel, but this is something I just have to talk about. Because for those of you who don't know, comics and superheroes are a huge part of my life. You know, it's always been like that. Since childhood, I've been a fan, and to this day, I am, and probably will be for a long time. Uh, so, also, Batman and Superman are like my second and third top favorite superheroes of all time. Number one is Spider-Man for obvious reasons, which I'm not gonna get into right now. But yeah, those are my like second and third most favorite superheroes. So obviously I wanted this movie to be good. I wanted to like this. But it, not only that, I mean this movie didn't just fucking satisfy me. It just blew me away with how bad it was. It scarred me. This movie is just so... I have no idea. The more I think about this movie, I've seen it twice. The more I think about it, it just makes me angry that they just fucked up so much. And they were so close, but not really to... Good scenes, there's so many good scenes and good moments and the cinematography is awesome, the fight scenes with Batman, there's so many things done in this movie right, but there's so many things done in this movie just terribly wrong and they just ruin so many storylines and character developments, which I'm gonna get into because, spoiler warning, I'm gonna get into this hardcore, okay, I'm gonna talk about the whole movie, scene by scene, spoilers, again, warning, 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 I'm gonna spoil the shit out of this movie, I'm gonna talk about everything. I'm gonna start from the beginning and get to the end. I'm gonna go scene by scene because I have this shit memorized, okay? I've memorized this movie so hard, it's just ingrained in my brain. So I just have to talk about this. Okay, so movie opens with Batman's origin story. And we all know this damn origin story, right? Everyone knows it. However, since it was, you know, put in the opening sequence, it was not really that troublesome to me. It was actually enjoyable because unlike other stories we've seen, um, I mean, this one was visually interesting. The slow motion, the music, the, just everything about it looked great. And that one scene when Martha's, Bruce Wayne's mother's pearls just get wrapped around the gun barrel and they just fucking snap as the gun fires in slow motion that looked great and it was in IMAX 3D so yeah visually that moment was great even Bruce Wayne attending their funeral it looked amazing it was a good opening sequence and told Batman's origin in few minutes however they were so close but they had to just fuck it up at the end so okay here's the scene Bruce Wayne runs away because he gets, I don't know, sad or some shit at, their, at his parents' funeral. So he falls into this cave, this bat cave, we all know that story. He falls into this cave, this, this hole, and he discovers this giant cave, and there are bats, right? He sees all these bats, and you know the story, but he sees all these bats, and he, he he's so frightened by them, that he later uses bats as his symbol of fear to intimidate his enemies and strike fear into them so the same way that fear was struck into him so that's his origin that's how he becomes batman that's why he's batman however in this version this swarm of bats just fly out from this cave and while he's just standing up bruce wayne he just gets surrounded by all these bats right and the bats are just flying all around him and he gets lifted up like he leaves ground he, his feet leave ground and he just lifted up and they buy these bats and okay here's the thing this is a dream sequence right this is not real it's just an interpretation it's it's a it's symbolic it's not really literal he did not really actually fly the fuck up right however this shit just drags on for so long it just becomes awkward it's just so awkward i timed this the second time i saw this movie i, I timed it this shit lasted for 35 seconds for 35 seconds bruce wayne is being lifted up by these bats and that's it nothing else happens and after like 10 seconds you're just sitting there wondering Okay, I get it. Just will you, will you just fucking stop, please? It just gets so awkward. They were just I was just looking around the fucking cinema. It's like, are you guys fucking seeing this shit? Do you believe this? So yeah, that was just insane to me. Like the perfect edit would would have been like if he gets lifted up, right? And we see his feet just leave ground and he just cuts there. And that's perfect, right? And we would have been like left behind with wonder like, oh, did he actually leap the ground or did he fucking imagine it? So that would have been just perfect. No, no, but they gave us 35 seconds of him just flying the fuck up. Now, you might say that, oh, I'm nitpicking, but it's really, it, this thing was like a theme throughout the whole movie because they set you up like you're with it, right? It's something, you're seeing something very good happen on screen, but then they just 
don't know what to do with it and they just fuck it up and you're left with disappointment that's what happens and that's the whole movie basically they don't seem to know which scenes are dragging too long and which aren't next we get bruce wayne in metropolis and you've seen this in trailers it's bruce wayne during the destruction in Man of Steel, I mean, when Superman was fighting Zod, what was Bruce Wayne doing during that? And this is what he was doing, he was running around the city in his car, driving around, saving people, and he was just seeing all this destruction, and he was being, he was pissed, basically, this sets up Batman, why he's so mad at Superman, why he doesn't trust them. Also, I guess I have to mention this, about Man of Steel, obviously, I have to say that I, of course, was not a fan of that whole city destruction thing, the whole thing was just like Transformers 3, like, that movie was basically Transformers 3, just whole bunch of action, whole bunch of destruction, and there is no really character development or story to it. And Superman was just a dick who didn't care about humanity and he was just an asshole. In this one though, he's way worse and I'm gonna get into that later on. But when it comes to Bruce Wayne, I was actually very excited when Ben Affleck was announced as playing that role because I actually liked him. I mean, he's proven himself over and over again. He even has a, an Oscar. He won an Academy Award and he's directing and he's acting great and he's he's awesome, right? He has passed that whole Daredevil era and he has earned our respect. And I trusted him with this role and I was right and so were many others who did the same thing. And everyone is saying that the best thing about this movie was Ben Affleck as Batman and they're right. So yeah, the whole sequence was very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. Unfortunately, it's followed by, oh my god, I don't even know what this is, it's followed by the most ridiculous thing ever and that it's kind of insulting to me. Here's the scene, Louis Lane, who probably is suicidal at this point because I have no idea what the fuck she was trying to do, because I, I get that she takes her job very seriously, but she had to expect that she was gonna get killed because this, this was just some crazy, insane, dangerous shit she was up to, or that or she was just expecting Superman to save her. Unfortunately, one character who did not expect Superman to save him was Jimmy fucking Olsen. So here's what's up. So there was this guy assisting Louis Lane. Young dude with a camera. So I was like, oh shit, is that Jimmy Olsen? For those of you who don't know, Jimmy Olsen is a character from comics. He works at Daily Planet and he's best friends with Superman. I mean, they're so close that he even gave Jimmy like a, a special wristwatch that he he has to, he can just signal Superman and he can just hear him and he can just Superman can just come in and save the day. And that's a great relationship. So I was very excited to see this character and I even expected that, oh shit, I think I know what they're trying to do. They're maybe going to introduce that aspect that, oh, Superman is familiar with this guy and their friends and he's going to summon Superman and he's going to save them both. However, first they get exposed by the gunman or some shit uh, and Jimmy Olsen is revealed to be a CIA. So that's a change, right? I was like, okay, that's different, I guess, but I was not against it. It was, I guess, in interesting, right? Oh, I guess he's a CIA now. So that was still okay. However, what they do next is just, I don't know what it is. I don't know why they did this. They take a gun and they just shoot Jimmy Olsen in the fucking head. And he's just dead. He's gone, okay? So first, my first reaction was, oh shit. Did they just kill Jimmy Olsen? My second reaction was, wait a second, maybe it wasn't Jimmy Olsen. However, after I researched this, yeah, that guy, that character in the movie was actually Jimmy Olsen. So my third reaction is like, why the fuck would they kill off Jimmy Olsen? Either they don't want him in this movie universe, or they're just assholes. And they're like, oh, here's the character you, you fucking enjoyed for decades. Let's fucking kill him off in 15 seconds. Fuck you. So Louis Lane gets captured and she's held hostage and Superman just shows up out of nowhere. He just shows up and everyone is dead because they just killed each other or some shit. Uh, they're working for Lex Luthor, it turns out, and they just killed each other. Uh, well, I don't really care. That just stupid. It, it, that point is just whole stupid. That whole th thing is, with Lex is just idiotic. However, Superman shows up. Everyone's dead, and it's just Louis Lane and this one gunman who's point who has like Louis Lane as a human shield. And Superman just shows up, and that's like the first scene we see him like full body shot, and he's just there. And Louis Lane just looks at him, and Superman's like. 
I got this, don't worry. And she's like, okay, I trust you. And then Superman, like a fucking truck, he just rams this guy through the wall. And he, she's dead. He's probably dead. There is, he, you can survive something like that, right? When Superman tackles you with that speed and you just burst through a fucking wall, you're dead. I'm sorry, but you're dead. So that's our Superman, I guess. I was like, seriously, that's, that's the guy. That's Man of Steel. That's the hope we fucking look up to. That's the guy. Guy? I thought we learned our lesson from Man of Steel for him to be more careful and care for human life, but nope, he does still doesn't give a fuck. So I guess that's the Superman we have. Then we have this weird bathtub scene, which is so ridiculous, I'm not even gonna get into it. So forget about that shit. Also, people are blaming Superman because they think he's the one who killed all those people, which is fucking retarded because why the fuck would Superman kill people with guns? But, you know, forget about it. So... After that, we get our introduction to Batman. Like, we've seen Bruce Wayne, but now we get to see Batman. So, how is Batman? He's badass. Like, the first shot, the first time we see him as in full costume, he's in the background. And when that scene came up and we saw him just right in the corner, everyone just fucking screamed because that scene was epic. He was just there, just big and epic and scary. And yeah, he was frightening and he was doing his job well. That was a great representation of Batman. However, there's a one huge flaw which I'm gonna get into later when he actually does that. And I'm sure you probably know what I'm talking about. We get introduced to Lex Luthor and the first scene we get with him is him playing basketball and he's actually good at it, I guess? He shoots ball and he fucking makes it and he's, woo, I'm great. So his whole plan is that he found kryptonite and he wants to use it as a weapon against Superman because he is a danger to humanity and Luthor does not like other people upstaging him with power. So, but the one senator is just like against it. So he does not really like her and they have this back and forth with each other. So I'm just gonna skip to the scene where Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent first meet. Take note that Bruce Wayne is doing some detective work and he's telling Alfred that the bomb is gonna arrive in Gotham so he has to track this bomb down and stop it before he arrives. However, it turns out that he actually knows about the kryptonite and he wants to steal it from Lex Luthor and use it against Superman because he thinks he's dangerous. So he arrives at Luthor's party as a guest. And Lex Luthor has this scene where he comes out and he has a speech and he's just bumbling and he's awkward and he's weird, which was kind of intimidating. I gotta say that the, during the first half of the movie, I did not mind him that much. He was weird, but he was like freaky weird, right? So it was kind of fitting the character-ish, kind of-ish, loosely fitting the character, that he made you feel uncomfortable and you think that, okay, this guy might be crazy, which is what he becomes later on. He goes full crazy in the second half. He just, I don't know, he just ups the game. That's Batman's area. Like, Batman's villains are crazy and psychopath. Superman's villains are generally smart. So he does his thing and he fucks off. But there's this great scene where, since Batman Bruce Wayne is there to investigate, he's talking to Alfred through an earpiece, right? But Superman is also there. Clark Kent is also there. So he just hears that shit because he has super hearing, right? So he just hears this conversation between Alfred and Bruce Wayne, he's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So he, I guess, gets suspicious and he makes the first move and he, he talks to him. And they have this exchange from the trailers and then Lex Luthor shows up and he's like, eh, Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent, does his stupid shit, and he, he, he does this kind of shit and he then fucks off. During this time, Bruce Wayne was downloading some data from Lex Luthor's servers, so he goes back to check on it, but it's not there anymore. Somebody took it, and he sees Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, and she's there, and she, he sees that she takes it, which is fucking stupid. I guess she wanted him to see that. I guess she wanted him to know that she's the one who took it, because she basically shows it to him, and she puts it in her purse, and just drives away. So he's like, who the fuck is this bitch? So he tracks her down and he's like, why did you steal from me? And she's like, oh, fucking men, always accusing of things. I swear she almost said that, but uh, she was this close from saying that, I swear. Uh, but she was like, I did not steal it, I borrowed it and it's in your glove compartment in your car. You can check on it if you want. I couldn't decode it because it was some kind of cryptic security system, whatever the fuck. And he was like, okay. And they have this kind of ke weird chemistry tension between them, which is kind of, kind of interesting. I like to see where that goes. Then we get something that we should have seen a long time ago. Superman actually helping people, actually saving people, performing good deeds. 
But however, we get a montage of it. Like, yeah, the first clip of him just dragging this giant ship in Arctic is looks amazing, right? And I said this again, I'm gonna say it again. Visuals in this movie are fantastic, right? Even there's so many iconic like imagery, or even the the one in the trailer of Batman, like from the cover of The Dark Knight Returns, with him just just his soul silhouette and with lightning in the background. That looks amazing. There's so many good moments in this movie that just look good, but it's not enough to make a good movie. And the worst of all about these clips and overall about Superman in this movie is that he just looks depressed as fuck man he just looks like he's in so much misery like holy shit dude smile I want Superman to fucking enjoy saving people I want him to save people with a smile I want him to be the beacon of hope that's the whole fucking point of his character like holy shit dude if, if I was in trouble and if I was about to die and he came in to save me with just that depressed look on his face I would tell him that dude just go away just let me die if this shit bothers you so much I'm not gonna fucking put all this burden on you just go away let me die I'm not gonna bother you with my shit I don't want my Superman to be fucking depressed all the time I want him to enjoy what he's doing that's the whole point maybe that's me I don't know but this obviously definitely is not the Superman I wanted so that montage is followed by a dream sequence. It's just phenomenal the way this movie just goes from a dream sequence to a montage to a dream sequence to an action scene to a montage. It's just amazing to me. So we get this dream sequence of Batman in a desert. We've seen this in the trailer and it's like the it's like a dystopic future where apparently Darkseid has come and fucked shit up and everything is fucked up and Batman it has guns and he's just fucking shooting people left and right. He's just like, ah fuck you all. Doesn't give a fuck. Fuck, he's killing people left and right and he's just brutal and he gets captured and Superman shows up and turns out Superman has turned evil and he's, he just walks in he just menacingly he just walks through this hallway and his soldiers are bowing down to him he's like oh master Superman all this crap like Darth Vader okay this is totally from a bible right there's Batman in the middle tied up with his hands uh, up and he's just hanging there and there are two guys uh, on his right side on, and on his left side now tell me if that imagery is not of Jesus, right? When he's being crucified, when he's in the middle and there are two people on his sides, right? That's straight up from the Bible and they're fucking, even in the Man of Steel, there are so many fucking Jesus imagery and now we get one with Batman. So this is supposed to be the evil Superman. This is what Batman is afraid of. And what Superman does is he hit visions the guy on his right and the guy on his left, right? He kills them both. He just disintegrates them. So this scene was supposed to be like the holy shit moment, like, oh shit, Superman just killed two people, what the fuck? But you know what? It's not that shocking, you know why? Because we've seen that done before. We've seen Superman kill Zod in the first movie, and he probably killed the guy he ran through the wall in the beginning of this movie. So if you're gonna have a character do something that's supposed to be shocking, it's gotta be something they do that they have never done before. It has to be something out of their character, right? So when you have a Superman who has killed before, and you have him kill again it's not really shocking it's expected so yeah he unmasks Batman and he kills him too and he wakes up and then we get this cool ass scene with the flash this portal just fucking opens and fucking flash shows up anyone who knows who flash is obviously recognizes him and he just shows up and he he's warning Bruce he's like you were right you were right Lewis is the key they're shoving Louis Lane to be important for some reason, which I still don't see how she's important because she has she had no role in this movie. She had no point whatsoever. And then Bruce wakes up again. So it was a dream within a dream. But this scene would have made sense if it was not a dream. Like if he woke up from his nightmare sequence and then Flash showed up in reality, it would have made sense because if you don't know, Flash can do that. Flash can travel through time. It would make sense. But that it was a dream within a dream, it does not make that much of a sense unless it was a different timeline. So like the Batman's nightmare scene was a different timeline, then he woke up and then Flash showed up and that was a different timeline and then after that he woke up in a different timeline. So if that was like the combination of three timelines, then it kind of makes sense. <laughs> it's crazy and complicated, but it makes sense. 
after that, Batman goes to hunt down the people who have kryptonite. They're, they have this kryptonite in the truck and they're taking it to Lex Luthor. So he gets into his Batmobile, which looks great if you ask me, and he hunts them down. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. He just hunts them down. Like in the nightmare sequence, it was supposed to be this post-apocalyptic world and he just didn't give a fuck anymore. So he was just killing people left and right. But... In this timeline, in this reality, why the fuck is he killing people? It just makes me insane. It's like such a it's such a core to his character that he never takes a life. Because he can easily just kill a villain, right? Oh, the Joker has people hostage? Boom, he's dead. Why the fuck would he take him to Arkham so he can escape again and kill again? No, he would just fucking boom, kill him and it's it's over, right? In the next movie, in the Batman Soul movie, when some super villain shows up. Why can't he just fucking kill him without any fucking plot or anything? He just shows up, oh, a villain, boom, he's dead. Problem solved, right? That's a huge problem, dude. That's a huge problem. So yeah, Batman is a killer and it just destroys his core concept of the character that he never takes a life and that just makes him as bad as his villains. And that's not who Batman is. But yeah, in this scene, he kills people, he doesn't give a fuck, he fucking hooks this, he hooks his car, and he just drags it. First of all, he blows this car up, right? This car is fucked up, it's, it's on its side, it's fucked up, people in there are probably dead. And just to add insult to injury, he hooks this already fucked up, destroyed car with dead people inside. He hooks him up and just drags it like a fucking wrecking ball. You know that scene in The Fast and the Furious when they just drag this huge safe like throughout the street? Yeah, imagine that, but Batmobile is dragging another car. That's what happens, and he's just fucking wrecking shit left and right, just using the corpses of dead people inside the car as a wrecking ball to sh wreck some other shit. So, I don't know, this Batman is just fucking mental. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. So then Superman just shows up. Out of nowhere, he just shows up, and he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't even ask Batman who he was chasing, why he was chasing them, why he killed so many fucking people. No, he does not give a fuck. He just wrecks Batman's car, and he's like, Hey, next time they shine your light, don't go to it. Consider this mercy. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Is this Superman? What the fuck is going on? And then he just fucking flies off all depressed and angry and shit. And Batman's like, hey, tell me, do you bleed? You will. And I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Like, who the fuck wrote this? Who the fuck are these characters? Like, they're saying shit they would normally never fucking say. Like, what the fuck am I watching? These are not superheroes. They're just two psychopaths going at each other. They just want to kill each other. They want to eat each other alive. What the fuck? are these people so that scene is over and then we get this trial scene and you've seen that in the trailer where Superman just shows up in the Senate and there is like this hearing and I thought that was gonna be a great scene I thought that he was gonna show up for once again he's also depressed goddamn it's like take notes in every scene Superman is depressed he always has this expression that he's about to fucking cry so he shows up all depressed and shit. I thought they were gonna like actually call him out on his bullshit. Like, hey dude, what the fuck are you doing? And they kinda did, but he just stood there and I was ready. Like, I was ready to cry. You know why? Because I, I gave this movie credit and I thought that they would give Superman a moment where he would just have a speech. Where he would just explain his feelings. Where he would just like express what he's trying to do and how hard it is and how how difficult it is and how we're making it difficult for him because we're not giving him a chance and we're actually blaming him for things he can't control and I was just ready to cry I was like okay here it comes the great Superman scene where he actually redeems himself as a character and as a person you know what happens the building just fucking blows up because fuck everything, right? Because Lex Luthor was like, you know what? This chick is pissing me off, the senator. And he just kills everyone in the fucking building. So everyone is fucking dead. And we get this shot, Superman standing in the fucking s building surrounding with fucking flaming corpses. He's just standing there and everything around him is burning. He's just standing there and looking as depressed and mopey as Ever, like holy shit if you didn't think he was depressed before and mopey before pff, wait for this fucking scene because he's he takes it to the next level and if this was I don't know a classic Superman you know what his reaction would have been 
he would have fucking lost his mind, right? He would have screamed. He would have fucking maybe cried. I don't know. He would just he would just break him. This this situation, if it was like a normal classic Superman, this moment would fucking break him. It would just tear him apart, and he would just go insane. He would just I don't know scream or destroy some shit, and it would be fucking understandable. But this guy doesn't give a fuck. He just stands there. He's like, ah, oh, another day being Superman. Wah, wah, wah. It was something like that. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, that's your reaction to this? Seriously? Then he goes to Lewis and he's like, well, I'm done being Superman. Fuck everything. And he just leaves. And then we get this fucking scene. He's in the fucking mountains as Clark Kent. And he sees an apparition of his dad who's talking to him and he's telling him information he doesn't already know which does that mean that he was a ghost what the fuck does that even have to do with anything i have no idea this scene this scene came out of nowhere and it had no point and it just disappeared like if you take this scene out nothing changes right we get to see superman in the mountains and the next time we see him he's not in the mountains so i have no idea what the fuck the point of this was but it's there so you know accept it or just i don't know so Lex Luthor gets the hold of Zod's corpse and he also has access to the whole Kryptonian spacecraft that crashed. He cuts his fingerprints to access the spacecraft but when he walks in the system is like hey what's up bro and he, are you in charge and he's like yeah I am and the system was like okay cool no problems because I'm like okay if you have this advanced technology you tell me you can't scan the person who just walked in or recognize their voice or something I, I mean you have this fingerprint technology but you, as soon as you enter it the ship just stops giving a fuck so that happens so he takes Zod's body and he revives him into doomsday there we go, that's the, that's the plot, there's nothing to see here, but before that happens, so Zod is in this, this like, womb type of thing, the, he's just, just being born, I guess, he's just hooked up to all this electricity and shit, like Frankenstein's monster, totally like Frankenstein's monster, and that's happening, while that's happening, Batman has got the hold of Kryptonite, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna build this cool suit, well, he didn't build shit, the fucking, probably, Alfred built that shit, his iron suit is from the Dark Knight Returns comics. You've seen that shit in the trailer. So he's ready. So Superman warned him that to never go to the bat signal. So he's a rebel. So he just fucking <laughs> he turns on the bat signal on his own. Like yeah, what you gonna do about it? He just stands there waiting for Superman. And Superman's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't care, right? However, uh, Lex Luthor knows that Superman is just not gonna go and fight him for no fucking reason, even though he warned him to stop being Batman and he would go after him if he didn't stop being Batman. But Lex Luthor gives another motivation when he kidnaps his mom. So that's the whole big plot point where Lex Luthor kidnaps Clark's mom, Martha Kent. And even the whole the way the whole scene is set up. First of all, Lois Lane is there for some reason and he throws her off the building. Superman catches her and saves her and then he goes up and he's like, it's over Lex Luthor. So when, that's when he tells him about Martha and Superman just loses his shit. He was about to kill him. Like when he sees the pictures of his mom being held hostage and all tied up, his just fucking heat vision kicks in. His eyes are just fucking red, just glowing. And he's about to fucking vaporize that fucking guy, right? He's about to kill him right then and there. Lex Luthor, fuck you. He's going to melt his ass. But he's like, uh, 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 if anything happens to me, she dies. And that, that's the only reason Superman did not just end Lex's life right then and there, which is something that should never happen in the first place. So Superman is like, okay, fine, I'm gonna go fight Batman. But before the fight, we get a great scene of Wonder Woman receiving an email. It's from Bruce Wayne, and he's like, hey, what's up? You remember that data you fucking uh, stole? Oh, I'm sorry, borrowed? Well, I decrypted it, and... There's some stuff on it I'd like you to see. So this is where we get the montage of Justice League heroes. And this is the most, I don't know, the laziest, the most bullshit introduction to characters I have ever seen. So she opens these files and they're like few files with logos of the fucking characters, of the heroes. I guess Lex designed those logos for some reason, I have no idea. But there are like specific logos for each character, Aquaman, Flash, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman, right? So she clicks on the Flash icon and there's this security cam footage from a convenience store where Flash saves the guy, the clerk, 
from like the robber and that's over okay that was fun what's next oh let me just click on the next video of cyborg just being there it's it, that was actually the cutscene of cyborg and then there's this mother box that fucking fuses with cyborg and rah, he's screaming and but the worst of all the worst footage out of all of these was the fucking aquaman scene so we get this fucking scene uh, and it's it's a drone footage like there are these two drones exploring the ocean and one of them goes into this like uh, sunken ship or something and we see like two glowing eyes for a few seconds and and then Aquaman just shows up and he looks like he's fucking drowning I have no is this Aquaman I, I thought he could just breathe underwater but apparently no he the expression on his face he looks so fucking uncomfortable it just it was just amazing to me I was like why is this guy so weird he just looked so weird he looked like he was drowning and he just just floats there like a like a fish he just floats there and he just looks at the camera he just keeps looking and looking and he's just posing with his with his hair just flowing in the fucking water and he just stands there stays there for a few seconds and again another scene that just drags on for no reason and it just becomes awkward so I'm just staring at this guy just posing in, in the water, almost drowning, and then he whoosh, just fucking goes supersonic in water somehow, and that scene ends, and that was just fucking weird, awkward, and just strange to me, I, the worst one of them all, obviously. Anyway, let's forget about that shit, uh, and let's move on to the Batman vs Superman aspect of this movie, right? The big fight, the main selling point of this movie, the title. Batman v Superman and I was like okay hour and fucking 40 minutes so far it sucked right so I'm like if this fight is good it's gonna be enough for me at least to, t to take something from this movie right at least make this fight good and I thought I actually had expectations for this fight I actually thought it was gonna be amazing however it was not it was terrible Superman just shows up first he tries talking to Bruce he's like okay uh, wait, let me explain, we don't have to fight or something, and Bruce is like, fuck you, I'm not gonna listen, and he just attacks him, and they fight, and it's just the most boring fight I have ever seen, it's just punching contest, he throws kryptonite gas bomb at Superman, he just weakens for a few seconds, and Batman punches him through a few times, buh, 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 buh. and then he, Superman recovers, he just wrecks Batman in the face, breaks through walls, and even though Batman is wearing this armor, if someone punches you through a fucking building, you're dead, okay? It's just basic physics. You're gonna fucking die. Uh, but no, he survives because he's Batman. So he takes another grenade to the face, and Batman is punching him, and he just wrecks him, and he fucking hooks his leg, and he drags him, and he just fucking lifts him up, and he takes this fucking sphere, this sphere with kryptonite, like, tip at the end, and he's about to ram this shit in his heart, just kill Superman right then and there, he's about to end this shit, Batman is about to destroy, kill Superman right then and there, doesn't give a fuck. Even though in the Dark Knight Returns, he wanted to send a message, right? It was moral thing. It was like a bigger story. It was a, there was a bigger point to the story. But no, here he just wants to kill him. And he's about to kill him. But Superman is like, Martha, Martha, they have Martha. And Batman just loses his shit, right? The greatest detective in the world. The, he's intelligent. He, he's so amazing. He's Batman. He's the best superhero of them all. And all that shit just goes out of the window. He's just going crazy. He's losing his shit. He's like, why, why are you saying that name? Why, why are you say Martha? Why did you say Martha? He's just going insane. And Louis Lane just shows up. And she's like, it's his mom's name. And so Bruce Wayne is like, oh shit. And he just throws the sphere away. So, okay. I, I get it, okay? All the hardcore fanboys and whatever the fuck, they're gonna defend this scene. And they're gonna be like, you know what? In that moment, for Bruce Wayne, he actually realized that Superman is actually a man who has a mom and he cares about his mom. And it reminded him of himself and how he cared about his parents and about his motivations and all that crap. I get that. I, I understand that. However, it's still stupid. It, it does not excuse the fact that this scene and this explanation to why Batman suddenly befriends and trusts Superman is the most laziest thing they could ever come up with. It's just idiotic, right? You can't justify this. It's very lazy, it's very stupid, and it's childish. So he throws away the sphere, and by the way, the sphere is its own character. Like, this sphere goes through some shit. 
So then Batman's like, Martha is not going to die tonight, bro. I'm going to go save her. And he goes out. He finds Martha. And that scene, that whole scene that follows that of Batman just taking guys out and saving Martha is the best scene in the whole movie. Nothing before that scene or after that scene is even close to how awesome that scene is. Solo Batman fighting some random goons is way more interesting than Batman or Superman, which is just sad, if you ask me. So Batman is just taking out guys left and right. He's just kicking the shit out of everyone. He's beating guys with another guys. He's throwing grenades and shit. I don't know. So he takes everyone out. And of course the last guy left is actually from the comic Dark Knight Returns. He has a fucking flamethrower. And he's aiming at Martha who's tied up in a chair. And Batman's just on the other side of the room. And he's like, not Batman, the, the flamethrower guy. I forgot his name. He's like, I'm gonna kill her. Don't come close. And Batman's like, I believe you. But when in the comic he just throws a bearing and knocks this guy out. He throws a bearing and hits the fucking gas tank. And that guy just fucking explodes. And he dies. So he, Batman just straight up kills the guy and he saves Martha and Martha makes the only joke in the movie when Bruce Wayne is like, I'm actually a friend of your son, which is kind of crazy because he was trying to kill him in fucking 30 minutes ago. Uh, and she was like, yeah, I know because of the cape. I, I got that, which is funny, but it's kind of stupid. And meanwhile, Superman went to track down Lex Luthor and there's his, this whole lightning shit going on in the middle of the city and the power goes out. And what the fuck is going on? Lex Luthor is giving birth to Doomsday and, and Superman shows up and Lex is like, man won't kill God, the devil will do it. And basically the whole motivation of Lex Luthor, I have no idea what the fuck is going on with him. I guess he's obsessed that he has all this knowledge but it does not really mean that he has power and he's like knowledge is supposed to be power but not for me just having knowledge without power is bad I don't know he's just not happy he just needs power I guess and he's jealous of Superman I guess he doesn't say it fuck it I guess we have to fucking guess so Doomsday is just fucking born and you know how in the trailers he looked like shit and people were like, oh, don't worry, he's just going to evolve in the movie. He's just going to keep evolving and his final form is going to be great. Well, guess what? I knew. I knew this shit. But I called it. There is no fucking evolution. Yeah, there is evolution. However, the form, the fucking final form we see in the trailer is the final form of Doomsday. Like, before that, he has a, another form where he doesn't have bones at all. He's just a naked, giant fucking troll. That's what he is. Just a naked, giant troll with no genitals. Uh, just an ass. And he's just standing there and he just looks disgusting. He looks like a clay figure. First of all, Doomsday goes after Lex first. He, as soon as he's born, he's like, Oh, fuck you. He almost kills Lex. And Superman has to save him. And he drags Doomsday into space. Which, actually, I liked. Because he had to he had to fucking do that at some point. Because that should have happened in the last movie. He had to take the fight into space with Zod. But he didn't. So, it had to happen at some point. Because they had to fix the fucking problem. So, in this movie, he yeah, he does take Doomsday. He flies Doomsday into the orbit. And he, he's kicking his ass over there. And then, military fires fucking missiles nuclear weapons at him and they try to take them both out uh, but of course doomsday fucking falls and he survives and superman is just floating in the air uh, in the orbit and he's just like a zombie superman which is straight out from the comic and i actually like that because that was a cool shot of him being like like a zombie superman just regenerating from the sun and returning to earth that was a cool scene so Doomsday lands on an island, and in the military base, there's someone who's in the background who says, The island is empty. There are no civilians on it. Just to fucking blow shit up later on, so people won't complain that people are dying. Doomsday lands there. Batman flies to the island. Doomsday sh fucking fires a fucking heat beam from his eyes. He knocks Batman down. He just crashes. And then Doomsday is about to fucking kill him, and Wonder Woman shows up. First of all, she was about to fly somewhere. She was on a plane, and she she sees a news feed on an airplane that Doomsday was kicking some ass and she was like okay I guess I'm gonna help so she joins in she blocks the fucking heat beam so she just goes ham and just starts kicking Doomsday's ass which was a great scene and then Superman fucking finally recovers and joins in and Superman is kicking Doomsday's ass he's punching him then one woman is just fucking using her sword and shield and she's fighting him and Batman is just standing there observing this situation he's just I guess I can't do anything but there was a point that he throws a grenade at Doomsday's face the kryptonite grenade that kind of weakens him for a few seconds but besides that, Batman really didn't do shit. 
he just stood there. So Batman has realized that since Doomsday is Kryptonian basically, uh, he must be also weak to Kryptonite. So he remembers the sphere that he left and I'm gonna get back to it. And uh, he drags, Doom he lures Doomsday to the city where the sphere is at. Uh, which I have no idea why he couldn't just pick up the sphere and fly to Doomsday instead of dragging Doomsday to the city Which Wonder Woman calls him out on he's like why the fuck would you lead him to the fucking city? Are you insane? He's like no, I'm Batman. Okay. Here's the adventure of the sphere I, I said I was gonna mention this right that sphere has his own fucking adventure. Here's what happened So Batman created this sphere. He took the sphere to fight Superman. He rammed it into the ground he left it there, he went, fought Superman, he dragged Superman to the sphere, he took the sphere out, he almost killed Superman, but then he realized that his mom's name was also Martha, so he changed his mind, and he threw the sphere away, then Lois Lane picked it up, and she threw it in the water, but then they realized, oh shit, we need that shit to kill Doomsday. So Louis Lane tries to retrieve the sphere she threw away. She dives in. She almost drowns. So Superman hears her fucking drowning and he saves her. And then he jumps into the water to get the fucking sphere. He picks the sphere out. He takes it out. He comes out of the water. He's almost dead because it's kryptonite. It's killing him. He takes the sphere. He flies at the Doomsday and he just rams that sphere into his fucking heart. He just kills Doomsday and Doomsday fucking shoves his bone into his fucking chest and they both die. And that's the end of the adventure of the sphere. And I have no fucking idea why Superman thought that he was the best person to wield the sphere when Wonder Woman was perfectly capable using that fucking sphere because she's a fucking warrior. It's a, it's her weapon, goddammit. She has a sword and a shield. I'm sure she's been trained to use a fucking sphere. Also, in the comics, when Superman fought Doomsday, the only reason Superman fought Doomsday was because Doomsday was just kicking ass. He kicked every superhero's ass. There was no one else left to fight Doomsday. He just kicked everyone's ass. So Superman was the only guy left who had this chance and he fought him and they both died. But in this scenario, you have Wonder Woman, a trained warrior whose whole specialty is probably wielding different weapons and instead of giving her the sphere, which I'm sure she even cuts Doomsday's fucking arm off, she would probably kill Doomsday in a second with that sphere. But no, he had to sacrifice himself for no fucking reason. Just so we could ram in the last plot point, the death of Superman into this movie. And what the fuck, this pissed me off very much because the death of Superman was just a big event. It was a huge deal, dude. And they just rammed this shit in the last 30 minutes. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Then again, it had to be obvious because they had Doomsday. When they showed Doomsday in the trailer, it should have been obvious for us that, okay, they're gonna do Death of Superman. But that has not even fucking come up in my mind because I had no idea they would go there. I was I, I thought that Doomsday gonna show up, they're gonna fight him, and then maybe Doomsday is gonna return and be more powerful and then kill Superman because fighting Doomsday now and killing Superman off just like this is just pointless because people hate Superman. There are fucking protests out there. They're like, Superman go home or shit like that. They're just against him. Half the world hates him. He hates himself. He hates what he does. He hates saving people because he has a depressed look on his face all day. So killing him has no value or fucking impact on anyone. He just dies for no reason and nobody cares. That's the difference. When he was killed in the comics, people cared. It was a tragedy. It was heavy. Nobody cares here. Nobody gives a shit, okay? It was just pointless, pointless thing. They shoved in the movie. They took a great premise and they just shot on it. They just stomped on that shit and they just destroyed it. They ruined it. That's it. So Superman is dead, Doomsday is dead, Lex Luthor is in jail, and Batman attends Clark's funeral, and Wonder Woman is there, and she, Batman's like, we have to create some kind of Justice League to fucking have a defense system against threats like Doomsday. And she's like, okay, fine, I guess. Then we get to see Lex in the prison cell, and Batman visits him, and he's like, I have to fucking brand you or whatever the fuck. Because apparently Batman is branding people, and when he brands somebody, and then they, that person goes to jail, he's killed off, right? Like, people just kill him. <laughs> so it's basically a death sentence. So he was he was about to brand Lex Luthor, but 
he didn't and the last shot we get of Lex is him in the cell Batman leaves and he just snot is coming from his nose and he's just almost crying and he's just yelling dumb shit <laughs> he's just oh he's coming talking about dark side I guess uh, he's coming and he boop up he starts saying shit like that I don't remember he starts saying random words uh, and it's just fucking insane he just went whole mental at the end he, I have no idea what the fuck is gonna happen to him is he gonna recover is he gonna be insane from this point on I have no idea but he totally went mental at the end and the last shot which is probably again the last kick in the balls is we get to see the coffin of Superman and the last frame is like the, the earth the dirt just gets lifted up so that that basically tells you that he's alive but they didn't have to fucking do this god damn it why did they have to show this shit I mean come on obviously we're not stupid we knew that he was not gonna stay dead because he comes back in the comics and he had to be present for the Just League movie right so it was obvious that he was gonna come back just don't show us that he's alive in the last scene of the movie you killed him off because what you did was you took this fucking awesome storyline and changed it to the death of Superman for 12 hours because that's what happened Superman died and 12 hours later he came back whoop the fucking do like how you think that's impactful you think that matters you think that's emotional no it's not it's just stupid so that's what happened I think I touched on most most points that pissed me off in this movie and my problems with it and my only hope is that Ben Affleck is gonna direct his own Batman solo film and I actually have hopes for that because I trust him and I trust that he's gonna make a decent Batman movie but he has to deal with this shit like he has to deal with killer Batman and he has to fucking justify himself or redeem himself from this shitty Batman we got in this movie that he's just a killer like he has to deal with that shit right somehow he has to come up with some explanation to not kill again so yeah that's what happened just tell, tell me your thoughts do you agree do you disagree maybe I'm crazy I don't think so I think I made some few valid points and if you like it great I mean that's just your taste in movies I don't know it's just you can't argue with that that's your preference but for me personally they ruined my favorite storylines and they ruined my favorite characters and this definitely was not the movie these characters deserved simple as that so yeah thanks for listening guys and see you guys next time